A new 15-inch MacBook Air that has been long rumored? Uh, yes please. Today, Apple announced the brand new M2-based MacBook Air with a 15-inch display at their annual Worldwide Developers Conference, along with a whole bunch of other stuff, but we only care about the MacBook. This computer has been rumored for quite a long time, and I'm really happy that it's finally here, and I think a lot of you will be too. So let's start off by talking about the specs, the new 15-inch MacBook Air, which one you should probably get, which one I'm going to get, and is it going to be a flop? First of all, anytime there's new Apple hardware, I am there for it. I am so happy there's now a 15-inch MacBook Air. People have been waiting for this device for a very long time. A big screen Apple laptop that's not pro and doesn't cost $2,500. Inside the new 15-inch MacBook Air is going to be that M2 chip, just like what's in the M2 Air right now. The great thing about this is all you need to do is decide what size laptop do you want. Do you want the 15 inch or do you want the 13 inch? And then most of the other spec options are going to be the same. I'm going to go over the configuration options in just a quick second, but first some of the things that are different on the 15 inch versus the 13. On the 15 inch, you now get a six speaker array built into the laptop. So now you get two force canceling woofers on each side, along with two tweeters compared to the four speaker array on the 13 inch version. You'll be going from a 13.6 inch display on the 13 all the way up to a 5.3 inch display on the 15. This will give you that extra real estate on the display to get more things done. So whether you're working on multiple documents at the same time or a video edit or running some games from Apple Arcade, you're going to get more real estate to play with. The display on the 15 inch is going to get up to 1500 nits of brightness, just like the 13, along with P3 wide color and true tone. Now, when it comes to the physical size of the 15 inch MacBook Air, it's going to be just a little bit bigger than the 13. It's going to be about an inch and a half wider than the 13 and about an inch deeper. And as far as the weight, it's going to be about half a pound heavier than the 13 inch model. There's going to be a 1080p camera on the inside of the 15 inch, which should be the exact same as what's in the 13 inch right now. It's going to get Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.3. You're going to get two Thunderbolt ports and a MagSafe on the left side. And on the right side, you're going to get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And when it comes to battery life on the 15 inch, the battery on the 15 inch is about 26% bigger than the one on the 13. And that actually doesn't give you any extra battery. I don't know if the screen's sucking it up or what, but you're gonna get the same 15 hours of wireless web browsing on both the 13 and the 15 inch model. So now we can look at the configuration options of the 15 inch model. You can start with a base eight core M2 model with a 10 core GPU, eight gigabytes of memory and 256 gigabytes of SSD. And that is $1299. And what's great about that is that the price actually is pretty good. Now that the M2 13 inch has dropped to 1099 for just a $200 difference, you do get the larger display and I guess speakers, that's probably about it. But the larger display is what you're after, right? So 1299 for the base model, let's see how we can configure that. And it should be the same as how you can configure the 13 inch model. So first up, yep, you can configure the memory 16 or 32 gigabytes, $200 per upgrade. And then you can configure the storage from 256 gigabytes all the way up to two terabytes. Now, just like with the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air, that lower SSD tier is probably going to be slower than the M1 versions. We've all done tests on these. We've all seen the results. There's one NAND chip for 256 gigabytes, which means that it can't write in parallel at the same time, which reduces the speeds that you can get read and write from the device. If you do decide to go with an upgraded storage option, you can get faster speeds. 512 gigabytes is faster than 256. And once you get to one or two terabytes, it is much, much faster. Moving on down to power adapter options, you now have the option for that 35 watt dual USB-C port compact power adapter. And I got one of those right here. And this little guy is actually pretty handy to have. It is a great travel device, travel charger to charge multiple devices at the same time when you're on the go. Definitely a good buy. Now you also have the option for a new 70 watt USB-C power adapter. And because the 15 inch has a larger battery, this may actually charge the device a bit faster. And that's really it for choosing options. And if you wanna fully spec this thing out with 24 gigabytes of memory and two terabyte SSD and that 70 watt charger, it's going to run you $24.99. Now compared to the $24.99 that it costs for the 16 inch MacBook Pro, you're getting quite a bit for that with that two terabytes of storage and 24 gigs of memory. So definitely something to consider if you need a large laptop and you're debating between the new Air and the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now, the inevitable question is going to be, which one should you get? And after living with this base model M2 MacBook Air for gosh, 11 months now, I have a pretty good idea of how it performs. For regular everyday tasks, 
for web surfing, email, browsing, some light professional work, some light photo editing, Apple Arcade gaming, using it for school, writing papers, creating documents, whatever, this computer will do just fine. And in that case, the eight gigabyte, 256 gigabyte version should work just fine for you. Now I have used this computer for my regular day job, which includes a lot of different apps and remote access and just different things with video calls. I've used this for video editing and I have hit the limits of what this laptop can do comfortably. So there's two scenarios that you should upgrade from the base model. The first one is if you're using it for professional work, you're doing some graphics or video editing, or you just have a ton of stuff open all the time, then you will benefit from going with 16 gigabytes of memory and or, and well, I would choose memory first and secondarily go with storage. Apps are always going to need more memory, so you should get more physical memory if that's something you're going to need. Also, even if you're not a real professional user now, if this is going to be a five, six, seven year laptop, you should still consider upgrading the memory and or the SSD. That will just give you the ability to handle whatever Apple or third-party apps throw at you over the next many years. Otherwise, you might be in a position where in a year or two, you might have to sell it and take a bit of a loss and buy something a little bit more beefy. For me, this is going to be mostly a couch computer that I share with my family, and my wife is trying to start learning a little bit of video editing to help me out. So what I'm going to do is get the 16 gigabyte and 512 gigabyte SSD, and that's gonna run 1699, and I think that's going to work well enough for my intended use cases, and this will last multiple years with this spec. And I just wanna reiterate one more time, the memory cannot be upgraded later. You should definitely consider it. You can always add external storage if needed, but memory, there's nothing you can do about in the future. Now, there is one thing that I've been wondering since the announcement a couple hours ago, and that is, is this thing going to be a flop? And the only reason that I say that is because we've kind of seen this story before. We had rumor after rumor after rumor of a larger regular non-pro iPhone. And we got that with the iPhone 14 plus, we got the larger iPhone in the non-pro variation, which meant it was cheaper than buying a pro. Everyone thought that that iPhone was going to be the big seller of the year, a cheaper, larger iPhone. However, it just didn't turn out that way. So same thing with the 15 inch MacBook Air. There's been rumors and people have been clamoring, at least on the internet, right? about getting a larger non-pro MacBook. And now Apple has announced one. So are people going to buy it? Yes, I think they will. And for one very specific reason, the price. The pricing of the 15 inch MacBook Air actually makes more sense than the pricing of the iPhone 14 Plus. The base model iPhone 14 Plus actually starts at 899. The iPhone 14 Pro Max starts at 1099. So for a $200 difference, you get a large device either way, but there are actually really good feature upgrades going between the Plus and the Pro. You get better cameras, you get more cameras, you get the ProMotion display, you get better hardware, you get the dynamic island, you get actual real differences for that $200. So when somebody's going to a carrier and they're buying a phone on a payment plan, that couple of dollars a month is not gonna matter. They're going to get that better iPhone. Now, when it comes to the 15 inch Air versus the 16 inch Pro, there's a $1,200 difference there. It's not just $200 or just a couple of dollars a month. And so for the regular user who is walking into an Apple store or buying on apple.com, the difference between those two devices is not going to be worth $1,200. They're just not going to see the actual benefit. Even though there is a better display, there is better speakers. It comes with the M2 Pro, it comes with 16 gigabytes and 512 gigabytes standard, but most people are not gonna see that. They're just going to see a $1,200 difference. And for them, it's just not going to be worth it. So in my opinion, I think that the 15 inch MacBook Air is actually going to be a really big seller. I don't think it's going to be a flop at all. So anyway, what did you guys think about the announcement today? Are you excited about the 15 inch MacBook Air? Are you gonna get one? Let me know in the comments below. And I know we're talking about the 15 inch Air today, but I did just do a four month review on the M2 Pro. So if you wanna see that, check that out right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.